Generic greetings and welcome back to Where Ships Conquer the Skies. Today's beverage is a green tea with a hint of citrus. So in a previous video we were checking out some of the new things that were added with the version 1.0.18 and as part of that if we check out our landship editor and over to weapons we've seen that among other things they have added guided missiles. Now this is something that I was very excited to see because quite frankly it's cool. Um, we have these guided missiles, a sophisticated guided missile able to reach far away targets but not close by ones. So, obviously a lot of suggestions for what we can do with these. We've also got like aerial torpedoes, external and other bombs and like external rockets and different options for some of the older um, some of the older weapons that you can switch the, the look of and different variants, as well as things like Command and Crew, blah, 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 and Observation Dome. But I think we need to make some sort of guided missile. I guess it would be a, a sort of like a missile tank, basically. It would be something where we bring in these missiles and we launch it against static structures. Now, the problem is that it is very, very expensive. So if we have six of these, which we've currently got on there, the bare, <laughs> the bare minimum is 7,344 for just six of these. That's without anything else. So this is very, very expensive. And obviously, we have to be able to weather shots coming back and arm all of these and... It's going to be very cost prohibitive. Now, if we go back over for just for a moment here and open the building editor, we can see that one of the most expensive, actually it is the most expensive defense that we have is the land fortress. This is a very heavily armed and armored land um, building. And we've got heavy turret on the top there. We've got cannons on the fore and aft of this thing. Loads of flat cannons, obviously to stop any aerial attack. And then along the spine of it, a big set of sponsons across the entire thing. So this thing is heavily, heavily armed, but it only costs 3,246. So even if we went for the landship editor and check out the weapons here and use these guided missiles even if we had three of them we're already over <laughs> pointed by a lot so this is going to be quite challenging either way we are going to make a vessel that is heavily i wouldn't say heavily armed although having four guided missiles is probably classed as heavily armed but certainly heavily armored something that can sit back and absorb shots that's the point in this thing and keep sieging so over to our, I guess it would be resources first. Each one of these, what does it say? Reload time is 25 and it operates at four crew members. So I think we'll have to have two ammo stores for each of these. I don't think we have to, be, I don't think there's any illusion that we have to have a lot of armor and a lot of ammo for this thing. Certainly water points, fore and aft, and we have to make it move. Now, I'm not thinking in a terms of a campaign here. Not necessarily, anyway. We will make some allowances. But it's all about getting as much firepower for the cheapest cost. Like, as in, speed, couldn't really care less about. <laughs> it's a, it's something that we, we have to get it to its final destination. But I'm not bothered how it gets there. <laughs> <laughs> on the roads in a campaign it would be quite slow but we're not really like I say focused on that in terms of command I don't even think a bridge is required because our objective is to just go and fire and then we will wait we may go for a bridge we may not do we need a bridge we're probably going to have a bridge um, in terms of accuracy maximum accurate range is 6600 meters so the most accurate thing in the game minimum range is 214 I don't think we need anything like a telescope or an observation dome. It increases weapon accuracy. But that's 86, followed by a telescope of 122 and a targeting computer, which we're not going to have. But we don't need any of that, I don't think. May change my mind later on, but we'll see. Anyway, guided missile is in HP. What is the HP of it? HP is 640, so I don't think that's too bad. If we compare that with... Admittedly, on your standard cannon. That is HP 100. So, pound for pound, cost per cost, probably because of the size of it, not great. But things like a suspendium rear, which is about as large, 
not as large, but it's got 500, so it, it's comparable, I think. Anyway, that's the guided missiles. We've got four of those in. We can't move, and we can't do anything other than just uh, <laughs> uh, sit here at the moment. We're going to go over to armor first, and I'm going to go for heavy steel armor. Fill it. Like I say, we want this thing to be heavily armored. We could even think about brick wall. But heavy steel armor is probably the way to go. I don't think a stone wall is... Ooh, no, it's far too heavy. Heavy steel armor, then. So, let's go for propulsion. It'll be tracks of some kind. One set of tracks would work, I think. So we're going to go with that. Probably place it in, like, so. The bridge will mount four. And what are we missing? No coal, no crew. Yeah, we've got, we've got a bit to do, haven't we? So, resources. Machine shop. That might be an op that might be a good option actually, having a machine shop in. Hmm Yeah, I think we will. Repair this thing. Keep it going. Probably same story for Oh, we need coal. So I'm gonna place a coal store in here. Fire point there. Let me go over the overlays. Connections are very good. Water is not too bad. Not in the centre, but it's okay. Put it there, will it improve or make it worse? Make it somewhat worse. But I need crew quarters, which is probably going to go in there. Anyway, those are in. We'll go for command and crew. We're not going to have a command centre. We don't need it. They say all of the observation domes and stuff I don't think we need either. Um... Place the medical bay there. And the bridge up there. That could cause us some issues. Okay. We'll check out... No crew, yeah. Supply hatches. Mm, oh, can cannot give commands to ship. Why? Because we've got no crew, which means no commands. Okay. So we'll go command and crew and cull the cell. No quarters. One, two quarters. Crew 24 recommended 35. So what is the best course of action? Not that. We'll probably end up using berths. Like that anywhere. And that's not bad. That's even better. Alright. Well, apart from some supply hatches, we're getting there. This is a test bed, I should point out. Because we've never used... We've tried the missiles out, but not, not used them in anger. In terms of cost, they're already going to get two of them structures to this one. So I'm not convinced this is going to work out. But then again, it's always been a problem dealing with static structures, just because of how cheap they are. Because they don't have to move. They can't move. That's that's their defining characteristic of a static structure. <laughs> um, aye, so... I don't know what our options are in terms of dealing with them. But we'll have to see. Checking out some, like, keels and... No, we don't need any of this. I think it's just going to be, yeah, resources and steel cargo door. We don't need reinforced steel cargo door. And I'm just going to put those on like so all right um solid shapes naturally we've just made a brick but it's generally what happens place that there we're gonna put some just make a shape just gonna shape it a little bit like that and probably manage this one too there and do you want to go for a 2x2? Two two? Go up to there. Flip it to there. And then a filler. Um, It's not got much shape to it, but it is what it is. 
there anything else we could add to make it better? I don't think we need a telescope. But something just thinks that, you know, we just should have one, you know, to check it out. You know, is it a hit? You know, we don't know. <laughs> I like the idea of that. A crow's nest? Not so much. And I wouldn't like to be standing in that crow's nest when that missile goes by. No, I think the telescope is good. Because you would want to... I mean, it's it's more theme than anything else, let's be honest with each other. Okay, solid shapes then. So now we're three by... One. And there we go. Right, in terms of armour. As I said, heavy steel armour. Slight reduced structural integrity due to the large size. We could add a keel. I don't... I hope it's not necessary. Steel nameplate. Different variations now. So we can put a steel nameplate in. Don't know what we're going to call this yet. We've got different heraldry and masts and stuff. And chimneys. Don't think any of that would really work. Lights and flags. Let's let's see if it works instead of polishing the chrome. I think that's the the uh, the main thing. Okay, so we need a name for it. Um, we've got the Newcastle. Why not? We've already got a Sunderland. Save the design and save it. Let's see how ineffective this is. Over to combat day, we're going to add in a land ship and obviously go down to the Newcastle. There we are. We're going to put it on the very far left because, naturally, why wouldn't we? And in terms of building, on the right-hand side, we're going to put the most expensive building that we can fill. Actually, no. Let's work our way up to that. So, add a building. We would generally verse a white lookout, which is one of the one of the very first things I've seen we've seen in the game. It's got cannons, rifles, a couple of flak. Okay, but it's 1,352 versus our 8,045. So if we don't win this, then basically this thing's in a complete bust. Start the fight. We'll go for probably a normal fire for now. And let's see what happens. There's the missile out and away. You can see the tops open up and send the rocket. And I love the way they get built. So they're sequentially built. So you can see you get... We'll look at the front here and we'll pause it. So we get the frame first, like that. So this is the frame on the outside, then we get the different stages of tanks, so like propellant and all the whatever we need, there's the warhead, and then the cap, and then the cowling, then the fins, and then it's built. And there you are. It takes a while to prepare it, or fuel it up, or whatever it's doing. Yeah, I think it is actually fueling it up. <laughs> okay, you can see we are taking some damage, we've got outside view and we are taking some shots, but let's see what state they're in so we go over to the right and we can see they have taken a bit of damage nothing great let's go over to rapid fire because why not in terms of our ammo we are on we have 8,000 and I think each one is like 25 or something along those lines either way here's the rockets coming in and good damage very good damage amazing couple of secondary explosions wouldn't go amiss. There we go. And for some reason it's chipping it down from the bottom. <laughs> I don't particularly mind that. We're getting secondary explosions on the rear of the building. But we're not seeing any great damage to the front, which is the side we're looking at. So <laughs> that's the bottom, I'll say the least. More shots out. We can hear them. And let's see what happens. More damage down the bottom. It's focusing. <laughs> the, it really is chewing away at the bottom of this thing. We're going to go back to the left hand side. Come on. Faster scrolling required. We haven't lost any crew. 39 39. Call none because we haven't moved. Damage minimal. Bit of a hole there. That's just, that's just a bit of an air gap, you understand. And. Waiting for this to rearm. <laughs> Let's just actually go up and you'll be able to see the arc of fight. See that? So, yeah, that's cool. And then we'll follow it in. Although I think they are a little bit quicker. We might not get there. Oh, oh, oh. Just in time to watch it 
collapsing on itself. So now we're versing a bunker. Uh, <laughs> ironically, we're the one with the missiles. <laughs> and the worst thing is they can still fire because line of sight through this is not is not counted. So they're underground firing cannons at us, and we're <laughs> we're firing missiles at them. I know that was one uh, people's suggestions as well to make a static defense that is specifically designed to like be dug into the ground and yes that will happen we have to make something like that but that should be a win to be fair i expected and hoped for a win on this one if we didn't win this as i said at the start you know it's completely useless design <laughs> you know if we can't win against something that is well eight times more expensive than the thing we're fighting then we don't have any any hope at all so that's good, happy, but this isn't, as I said, being a very good test. Right, initial thoughts. We might have too much ammo. But then again, that was, you know, sample size of one. Let's go for a night fight. I was going to add an airship. I'll just point out the obvious. This thing is not designed to fight airships. I mean, it might be okay if we put it against Excalibur and we have, say, two... I mean, Excalibur's 16 grand, so we could get two new castles. To its one. Yeah, it's about even. But let's be honest. The initial volley, that's going to be a lot of damage. Brilliant. However... If we don't kill it in that one hit, we're going to get swamped by planes, bombers, and all of these hazards, followed by flamethrowers, rockets, whatever's left. And that's not something we can deal with. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm moving one of those out of building. This time, land fortress. So, this is similar deal. Static structure, a lot more armed. So, we expect to take a lot more damage. Let's see. Start the fight. Rapid fire. There's their shots coming out. Because of the distance. By the way, I'm actually going to move this further back. Because of the distance, a lot of their shots will be missing. And some of them may not even be firing. We'll have a look. Oh no, they are all firing. They are all firing. So there's the damage. Initial damage. Just spread around the place. Big blast, but, you know, no great piercing damage to just take out stuff in one hit. And this is where it'll be a case of, we need a lucky hit. We need to we need to do damage on the second or third volley and take out some of their weapons. Because even though we're armoured, even though we're this far away, we are still getting peppered. There's the missiles. I really want to make a bunker now. <laughs> There's something about bunkers that are interests me and uh, there we go there's some damage it's not in the right place though still got all the forward cannons one two three four five six of the turret on the top and all these sponsors doing damage here is all well and good because I think we've taken out their water supply back here quite frankly it's not good enough what ha what is good actually we've taken out their crow's nest so their accuracy is going to be down and that's already a disadvantage for them anyway so let's see what happens. With the volley coming in. There we go. Some secondary explosion in the ammo. And fire. They've lost some flak. And they've lost some stuff at the back again. The missiles seem to be firing further back here, which is not something I really want. I don't know if aim fire would really matter. Aim fire would just make it more accurate. But we're already hitting the target. We're not, we're not missed yet. So... I don't know. I think rapid fire just keep them shots coming. Let's see where this next volley hits. I'm hoping here. Right, good. They've lost half of their cannons on the front. And they've stopped firing. I think we've taken out the ammo. They do have more ammo. Surely they have more ammo. 
Aren't you not? They've ceased firing. <laughs> Good. Happy. Going for an aimed fire now. No reason to even risk any sort of miss. And there's the back end that's been snapped off. We're not receiving any more shots. We're going to go over to the left-hand side then. Actually, what we'll do is move it. We'll move it further forward. So we're going to check out the motive systems. Can confirm. Garbage. Uh, <laughs> didn't expect anything else, to be honest. We knew it was not going to be a fast vessel. We'll see what it's like with trees. They're shouting, yeah. You can see ammo. We're about... We're getting close to half. Okay. Outside view. Damage-wise, hardly taken any damage. It's very ponderous, this thing. I mean, there's a little bit of a hole there. But let's be honest, it's actually made the hole where our maintenance shop is. So they're just going to pick a couple of planks up and nail it on the top, so <laughs> it'll fix that hole no problem whatsoever. There's damage. Good damage. Lost the turret and another one of those. Going to speed up to max speed. No reason not to now. And finish this fight off. So, I was going to say that to win, but not necessarily. Oh, I like that. Bang, bang. It just seemed to drill into it. The thing is, this is not necessarily a win. We have to destroy them. Fully. In order to get this win. And they're still classes in the fight. And we may run out of ammo. So, we'll have to see what happens here. Looks like there's just one section remaining here. I will say, target that. That should be a win. Okay. Newcastle survived. Combat stats. No deaths at all. Accuracy for myself is 56%. I don't know how. But there you are. Accuracy 16 on them. That's good to know. Module damage taken 19. Damage taken 2690. Damage taken for them. Over 10 times the amount of damage taken. Wow. Ammo used. 598 of 800. Okay. That could be a problem. Back over to combat. Building. Land fortress. One. Two. Add building white lookout. One. Two. Probably remove one. And land ship. The new castle. In the back, like so. This is fog, which units outside the fog bunker harder to hit. Let's go for a standard day fight, or maybe snowy. Um, snow. Start the fight. Immediately move back. I don't know what they're firing at. Haven't told them to target any particular thing. I think what we'll do though is target. This look out at the front. Trying to get that destroyed first. Or maybe... Maybe do target this this one here, because we might get some secondaries. We'll see. So, we are versing still something that is underpointed. We are still very underpointed here. Uh, they are underpointed, sorry, by a couple of hundred. But you can see now the full problem. That, yes, we are here. We've got our rockets. We've got good armour. We're just taking too much damage. It doesn't matter that we're far away. It doesn't matter that they're inaccurate. It's the whole idea of quantity is a quality in and of itself. That they've just got a sheer amount of firepower. It doesn't matter that it's inaccurate. It doesn't matter that it's most of it's missing. It doesn't matter that a lot of it is bouncy because of our heavy armor. It's just overwhelming firepower. Now we are chipping away at it. They have lost something. But not enough. We need to lose that turret before I start switching targets. There's some more shots on the front here. But realistically, that was just one missile. There's the others. They're coming in and doing damage. I think we've lost a missile. I think we've lost a guided missile. No, we've not lost a guided missile. 
we're about to lose four of them. <laughs> but, yeah, there's everything on fire. We do have the crew. We're down to 29 crew of 39. And you can see that they've just chipped away at the armor there. This is absolutely peppered. Second to back one, almost destroyed. Others are between half and a quarter health. Still firing. We are down on crew, which means reloading is going to be affected. Didn't put it on rapid fire. Probably should have done. But I think this just shows that actually, realistically, it doesn't matter what we had, we're not going to be able to defeat something like this. It's just too... There's just too much to deal with. Hmm. Okay. Leave. Yes. Back to combat. Add the land ship. Put the new castle back in. And building. I mean... GDS turret. Could do. Put another land fortress in. Two of. Let's just try two. See what that's like. Start the fight. Rapid fire. There's the shots going out. I love the arc that they take when they go at the top. <laughs> and move it back. So, that's a lot of shots coming out, as we would have expected. That'll be a miss there. Or at least a... A near miss hit around here, so it did some splash damage, but not great. That's initial. That's a good initial volley. Decent damage on the front. If we can take out those cannons and that big one there, then we're already doing good. Doing well, should I say? Doing gooder, better. -er. There's more shots from the left. Another hit here where the command center is. Don't want to command center. Here. There's the missiles coming in. We have a secondary explosion. There's some ammo going up. A bit of fire. But with it being raining, that fire can put out itself. That didn't sound good. That didn't sound good. <laughs> um, to my untrained ears, that sounded like some exploded over our, on our side. And something happened. We have lost. Oh yes, ammo. We've lost ammo. These two have taken too much damage. And we're losing crew. It's actually crew loss that's, I believe, causing us the most problems. Losing the crew has meant that the firing rate is down. Okay. Fine. Here's another shot coming in. Another volley. Good. Really good hit. Big cannon and the cannons at the front taken down. The target the ship back then structure at the back. But I think that's I think it's good night Vienna. I think it's it's already the writing's on the wall. We're not gonna we're not gonna win this. Crew's down to nine. We're gonna be decrewed before we can finish them off. Yeah, and we've also lost two of them. Okay. We'll leave that one there. So Landship Editor, open the design, Newcastle. What changes could we make? Well, firstly, is it effective? Yes, it is effective. It does exactly what it says on the tin. But at what cost? It's too expensive. It's just too expensive. Versus pound for pound, it's it's not worth it. However, in a skirmish setting or even a multiplayer setting, probably not great. But in a campaign, big difference. Because you're doing the long game. You know, it doesn't... Even if, if they have a... If, if, we, if we, for example, have... If they have 6,000, we have this thing, right? We send it in, we might not win it. But you can send one of these after, say, two, 3,000, no problem. And the main thing is you won't take pretty much any damage whatsoever. With the standard caveats of you never know what you're going to hit by, etc., etc. But the point is that airships against those tur against those ground structures, you never, you know, you're just never going to go near them because they've got too much flak. Um, you could use suspendium cannons, you could use torpedoes, there's lots of things you can do, but these cause so much damage. And when they work, this thing takes no damage back. So, actually, it's more cost-effective to field something like this, even if you're putting it against targets that are well underpointed. I think that will work out. I guess you could argue the same thing for anything, but... Is there anything we do to make this cheaper? We could do. We could remove the big motive system on the bottom, and instead put in... 
some tracks standard tracks um, probably a couple would suffice um, could do something like that would that work mm, no that's actually more expensive so we wouldn't put them in so we would just didn't have the large tracks I would probably add some more crew in because recommended is 36 and we've got 39 and we've seen the damage that you know we get we do have a sick bay to heal people but we very I have a feeling that very rarely do people get to that sick bay they just get taken out so I would probably go with another set of quarters somewhere I don't know where we will put them or maybe a couple of berths more likely we'll just put quarters somewhere um would I keep the machine shop I don't know cuz I don't know what sort of effect that would that would that was having I'd probably have to remove it and test it a couple of times to see what effect that has but if we didn't have one that reduces it by how much is it it's it's expensive that's for sure resources machine shop is uh, 320 so I will probably remove that then and have in most likely a another quarters and a repair bay we've got a sick bay but I'll probably have in a repair bay and move this thing around that would cheapen it out by about 400 probably more when you consider we're moving the rest of it around may even get rid of the bridge and put a cockpit but then again that's a bit risky I was going to put a secondary got a bridge over there I was going to put a secondary cockpit somewhere else just in case but I don't think it's going to much matter okay I reckon we could probably get this a little bit cheaper maybe if we're very lucky we could get it to say I don't know seven and a half thousand if we can shave a couple of hundred off it that I'll be very happy with that maybe get rid of a water store put it more centralized Get rid of the coal store. Put a smaller coal store in because we don't use the coal. Okay. I think it warrants a version 2. I think it does warrant a version 2. I don't think it's a write-off. But I certainly don't think that even with those changes. And with that sort of micromanagement and min-maxing of the build. Will we get it to a point where it's cost-effective pound for pound against static structures. But... As I said, I think it does have its advantages, and I think it is worth another redesign. Either way, that has been a little bit of airships, and taking a look at the Newcastle, the long-range uh, guided missile torpedo carrier. If you have any suggestions for designs, uh, certainly suggestions for that one there and changes, and by all means let me know if you would like to see uh, different designs with any particular focus on whether it be long-range, short-range, checking out some of the new items but by all means, again, let us know, and we will go, as always, from there. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care, and generic partings.